this tutorial is going to walk you through how to create a kaleidoscope image in Photoshop. We're going to do, we're going to start with a four section kaleidoscope that you see here. Um, but there's also ways to create an eight section kaleidoscope like this. Um, okay, so we'll start with the floor. Um, to do this, you're going to go up to create a new document. So file, new. And we want to set this to eight inches. So our units of measurement are eight inches and our height also is eight inches. Resolution 300. Make sure all your defaults are the same here. And then go ahead and click create. So now we have an eight inch by eight inch blank document. And we want to make sure for this project that we can see our rulers showing on the top and side. So if your rulers are not showing, you need to go up to the um, application bar and press view. And then move down until you see rulers and we want this checked so go ahead and click it if it is not checked. You also can do the shortcut which is command R on your keyboard to hide and show your rulers. Rulers in Photoshop allow us to pull down guides to help us um, create the layout that we want for our projects. So click within the ruler not above it or below it but right inside of the ruler and pull down. So this is pulling down what's called a horizontal guide because it's going left to right. And we want to enclose this blank canvas with guides. So I put one on the bottom, I'm pulling one to the top. I want one all the way to the right and all the way to, oops, all the way to the left. And then I also want them to be in the center. So another vertical guide to the center four by four or four inches so it's that's half an eight and then a horizontal guide down also to four so I've divided my space into four equal quadrants okay so then I need to create start to create my kaleidoscope so we're going to use what's called smart objects for this project and you need to find the shape tool on your toolbar um, it'll look like this or one of these options if you're not, by default, maybe it's on ellipse, you want to do the long click and select rectangular tool. Once you have that selected, go ahead and click and create a rectangle anywhere within your space. Uh, we want to make sure that our corners are not curved. If they are curved, click on the little blue um, dots and pull upward to straighten out those corners so that they're nice and square. Once we have square corners, you're going to hover around the corner points of this shape and drag them to the sides to line up with basically your guides and they'll snap too. You notice how mine turned pink, that means it's snapped to that guide. And we basically want to fill up one whole quadrant with this shape. All right, so we have that and over on our side over here, we want to go to move tool, sorry, move tool at the top of the toolbar. And then in the layers panel over here, we need to make this a smart object. So we're going to right click within this like dead space to the right of the name of the layer. And we're going to right click and go to convert to smart object. And you'll notice that the icon changes and also the look of this thumbnail. A smart object is um, a tool in Photoshop that allows us to create edits and do things outside of the main workspace here, but then it will be reflected in the main workspace. So we're going to double click on the thumbnail of this smart object. This will open up a new tab and it's only that rectangle that we created. Um, and you'll notice that the name of this is rectangle11.psb. Yours might be a different number, but it'll be something PSB. Now, anything we do within this space will be reflected into this space on our document. So we want to, this is where we want to grab our image. So great images for this project are things from like maybe the photo shoot with your shoes um, or the look-see project where things were abstract. Um, any of those will work great. Um, when you're once you've dragged it in there, make sure you hold down. Make sure when you're scaling, it's not skewing the image. So on my computer, I have to hold down Shift to enlarge or resize or transform my object proportionally. So I want to zoom in really close to my image, 
Um, and I'm going to start like right there. So things to think like at this point, you might not have any idea how it's going to look. So just kind of go for it. And then we can always edit it later. So I'm going to zoom in kind of close to my leaves so I can at least see the detail of the leaves and like also the detail of the siding on this barn. Uh, once you've created like major adjustments, you need to confirm with Photoshop that yes, you want to make those adjustments. So you can click the check mark up in the options panel or you can double click within the box and those outside frames will go away. And then you have to click Command S on your keyboard to save those changes. So we're going to do Command S. And you'll notice that it doesn't like have a pop-up window to ask you to save. That's because it's a smart object. And what just happened when I did Command S is it saved that smart object into that space where I had that rectangle that I had converted to a smart object. So now I have this shape in here and I'm ready to start to build my kaleidoscope. So over on the layers panel, we need to duplicate this essentially three more, three times to fill up each of these quadrants. But as we go, we're going to be flipping the um, layer horizontal and vertical. So ways to duplicate layers are, of course, dragging it to the plus sign. That will duplicate a layer. I'm going to do Command Z to undo. Another way to duplicate a layer is Command J. That will duplicate a layer. They both do the exact same thing, just one's a shortcut and one is like a physical drag. Once you've duplicated the layer one time, you're going to make sure you're on your Move tool grab the layer and slide it to the side. So now I have two of the, the exact same layers side by side, but I want to make this a kaleidoscope. So I've got to flip this one horizontal so that everything that is on this edge here is mirrored basically. So I'm going to go up to edit, transform, flip horizontal. And now I can start to see this kaleidoscope forming. So now I'm going to duplicate this layer again, command J, drag it down. Now this time I want the top and the bottom of this layer and the top of this layer to line up. So instead of horizontal, I have to flip vertical. So edit, transform, flip vertical. And that looks good. So now I'm going to duplicate one last time. Command J, slide it over. And this time I want these two sides to match up. So I'm going to go up to edit, transform, flip horizontal. And now I've created a kaleidoscope image. If I want to see it without these blue guides in the way, command semicolon will hide those guides. Command semicolon will bring them back. So now I can look at it without the, that distraction. So I think this is pretty cool. This is where we want to reflect on our work. What do we like? What do we not like? Um, I like how the roots here are connecting, this like really thick root. I like how... Um, I can see these leaves. Things I don't like are how there's like kind of a disconnect between like this cluster of leaves and this cluster of leaves. There's space there. I really like how these connect. So I can I can fix these things. It's going to take some trial and error, but I just want to note what I like and what I don't like. So I know how like what direction to go. So I'm going to go back to that rectangle 11.psv tab up here. And I still have this open. So I'm going to show transform controls in the option panel. And then what I one of the things I didn't like was how there was this like gap next to this cluster of leaves. So if I want to close that gap, I'm going to scale my image a little bit bigger so that it touches those leaves touch the edge of my um, space here. So I've scaled it bigger so that they touch the edge. And I'm going to do double click. Command S to save that change, go back to my workspace, and now I can see how that change affected my kaleidoscope image. So I think that's pretty cool, but there's other things I could try too. So maybe I just want to like totally abandon this, this, what I've got so far, and go totally crazy. And this time I'm going to try like rotating this image, and I want to see what that does because right now my images are very like I would call them linear because like the siding all lined up which is cool but I just want to try something different so I'm going to try rotating my image I want to make sure I'm not letting any dead space show so like my image like covers up this whole space that would be dead space over there um, so I'm going to like fill that in uh, double click to confirm my change command s to save 
look back at my workspace and like that's pretty cool like I really like how these are like creating like this like V shape so I could keep going a million different ways um, but do some edits do some trial and errors figure out what you like what you don't like um, and then of course once you get it how you want it make sure you save your work all right and that's it for the four quadrant kaleidoscope I'm gonna make a separate video for the eight quadrant kaleidoscope so once you figured this one out move on to the next all right happy editing I can't wait to see what you create